So I loved my Kindle Paperwhite. I loved it. So I went ahead and took a chance when I decided to upgrade to the Kindle Oasis. Was it worth it? Let's talk about it. Hey, what's up, bookworms and e-reader experts? Mike back again to talk a little more Kindle. Guys, this is going to be my last Kindle video, I promise, at least until the newer model comes out, because you know that that Kindle color is coming sooner or later, right? Last video I did, I asked if I thought it was worth it to shell out the extra cash and pick up a Kindle Oasis if you already had a Kindle Paperwhite. And I said, unless you were probably flush with cash, uh, probably not. I didn't think it was enough of an upgrade. But after six months of use, a question I get quite frequently is, well, how do you feel about it now? Well, we're going to talk about it, guys. I think that my viewpoint has changed since that video, and I want to think uh, there's many good reasons why. But we're going to do like we always do on my regular standard book reviews. We're going to kind of talk about the pros and the cons and then kind of like my final thoughts on it. So let's begin with what makes it good or bad, guys. If you missed the message in that first video, my wife really wanted a Kindle Paperwhite. And a lot of people missed that message because there's a lot of white knights that jumped in that comments and said, uh, oh, well, you're such a jerk. You should have gave the Oasis to your wife and you with Paperwhite. Look, guys, she only wanted the Paperwhite. She said this was too big. She did not want the Kindle Oasis. So that's what that whole deal was about. For me, this was just going ahead and taking a chance that I would like the Oasis over the Paperwhite. And what I said was, yeah, it's it's decent, but I don't know if it's enough of a jump to you know justify shelling out that extra cash. Well, there are some reasons why I've kind of changed that stance and think that if you've got the money, you should definitely do it. And let's talk about first some of the good things here, the pros. Number one, the processing speed on this sucker is night and day difference with the paper white. You know, and I didn't think so when I did that last review where I was talking about, I, I thought it was fine, but it wasn't nothing seriously recognizable. Guys, here's the thing. Uh, my wife gave me her paper white one day to put a book on there for her. And I was blown away going back to it and seeing how damn slow that thing is by comparison. I mean, something like flipping the page, sometimes you can count to three before it flips the page. And this sucker, man, nonstop non-stop it flips the pages like it's nothing it works through its os like it's nothing it's lightning fast and for me that alone is worth it uh does it is it like breaking to go back to the paper white only if you've used this if you've only used a paper white you probably don't even notice these things and it don't bother you too much but the word that i used in that was janky that i felt like it was kind of janky uh yeah definitely with this one the jank is greatly reduced so if you want less jank guys i definitely put that under a good next up i got to go with the warm lighting now this is something i didn't think was going to make that big of a deal to me because i talked the whole reason that i did this my very first kindle video was i was looking to reduce eye strain i was like the older i get the worse my eyesight's getting i don't want to add to it by you know taking years off of my eyes and having to use like a microscope to read a book by you know because of eye strain so i quit reading on my ipad and i got the kindle paperwhite and i didn't think that there was any i noticed a huge difference with the paperwhite with my eyes and in I didn't think that the warm light was going to make that much of a difference because I didn't feel like there was much of a problem with the paper white. Now that I've been using this warm lighting for six months, the biggest thing that I'll notice, and some might say this is a coincidence, I don't know. To me, when I would read for a long period of time on my paper white at night, I still would kind of have difficulty falling asleep. This isn't affecting my sleeping patterns like at all. I mean, I finished, I'm falling asleep while I'm reading. I'm like, okay, I'm going to go to sleep. And I go to sleep. You know, you had that point where you're like too tired to keep reading, but you're not tired enough to go to sleep. At least that's how I felt with the paper white. With this, no, and I'm tired. I'm, I go right to sleep. So I want to say it's kind of partly because of that, but also the auto brightness feature on here. You turn, turn on the warm lighting and you do the auto brightness feature. Perfect. I feel like this is the first device that I own that has gotten this right. Because all of my Apple eye products, the auto brightness is terrible. It always has it so dark. You have to go manually and flip the, uh, flip the light up a little bit. Uh, I, to me, this is just perfect. I read a lot in absolute darkness after my wife goes to sleep and it adjusts it just right. It's just perfect, guys. And again, it isn't affecting my sleep. So I got to say that the warm lighting has made a huge bit of difference there. A question I get quite frequently is, what about the waterproof part? I'm going to be honest here. Uh, I'm still a little too scared to try it. So I can't tell you anything about that. I haven't really read it outside and been caught in a rainstorm or anything like that to really give you an idea of how that works. 
but I know there are plenty of people who basically, you know, dropped it in the bath or dropped it in the swimming pool. I love to read, but I don't mean I don't swim in the dream. Of, uh, I don't even read in the swimming pool. I know that you guys love hearing about my sleeping patterns, right? Uh, I'm going to add some more to that here. A lot of the times, I'll read on my back. And, you know, after you get uncomfortable for a while, you'll want to kind of lean on the side and kind of, you know, lay it down and read like that off the bed. And one of the things I love about that is the paper white did not do the auto rotate where you flip it and the words automatically go flip around the other way and if you're one of those who wants to use the live physical buttons on this that's awesome because if you go like this and you're propping your head up with this you don't want to do this every time you turn a page you flip your hands to me that's just such a fun feature uh, I, I think it's just something that was really missing on the uh on the uh the paper white and i think it's really improved here and again if you are a lefty you can flip it and change which button you want it to be the page down, page up, page down. That's that's an awesome feature to me. Might not seem that important to others, but it's one of the things that I think is absolutely pivotal to making the upgrade here. Uh, the durability continues to be good. I've dropped it twice, and I don't have like a super heavy duty case or anything. It's just a leather case. It's fake leather probably. Uh, <laughs> but uh, it, it, my kids have dropped it a couple of times too. You know, and the thing is, like, they don't have anything interesting reading there, but it's just like, hey, it's a bright, shiny device that dad's using. I've got to drop that on the floor just to test it out. And they've done their part. Uh, not a scratch, not a ding. There's, uh, I don't know how, if this screen is supposed to be like seriously scratch resistant, but if it's made it through my eight and five-year-old by now and it's not scratch, I got to say that's a props for the, uh, the durability on this. Continues to be very, very good, especially if you have young children. The battery life is obviously the number one question that I get. I didn't think that the Kindle Paperwhite battery life was that bad. When I did my uh, first uh, discussion about the Oasis, I said it was still not that much better. I don't know if it was just indexing. I, I speculated it was just it was indexing when I first got it or something. But look, now that it's done all of that, guys, I charge this thing once a month and I read it every single night for at least about an hour. So yeah, the battery life on this thing is disgusting. And that's reading in complete darkness. So you know, it's, it's actually using the light, the brightness. So yeah, it's a very, very good battery. I haven't had any troubles with it. But again, I'm reading just text-based books, not a lot of pictures, not a lot of PDFs, anything like that. Just text-based books. Uh, I, again, I'll always charge it after a while and it's at like 65 percent or something so the battery life on this is ridiculous you shouldn't you shouldn't worry if you're going on a trip and you forget your charger i think you'll be okay probably so again the battery life they continue to improve that uh, i mentioned uh, pdfs the compatibility with uh, word and pdf things like that now if you use caliber obviously you can try you can you know convert any file because i know epub still don't work on here but you can convert that to AZW3 or whatever. You, you check out Caliber. I'll put the link below to Caliber if you don't know what that is. But it just, it'll convert your files over to whatever and you can sideload them on yourself. Uh, there was a new Brandon Sanderson book that came out this month and they were doing preview chapters on, uh, on Tor.com. And what I was doing, instead of reading it off my phone or reading it off of the computer screen, because what have I told you in these Kindle videos, that's very bad for your eyes. I went ahead and I copied and pasted those onto a Word document, converted it to an AZW3, and read it off of my Kindle. I think that's just such a neat feature. So continued compatibility with uh, Word documents or anything like that, you can convert them to whatever you want. But even if you don't convert it, you can put Word and PDF documents straight onto here, and they will work. That is the coolest thing. I know a lot of people had talked about I was in school when I first got this. I've since graduated, but uh, you know, a lot of professors would email the eBooks to you or something like that, and it was in PDF format. I still prefer to use my iPad for that because it's much better for like zooming. It's much better for reading color and things like that. But uh, again, if you want to do that, you can. This device can handle that. So I definitely got to put that as a positive. Now, when I say there's going to be some bad things here, to me, these are kind of nitpicks, and your mileage is going to kind of vary on this. So it's going to kind of depend on how you feel. First up, I'm going to say, do your research on a case first. Here's my biggest gripe with this. I paid too much for this case, so I'm kind of like being stubborn about replacing it because of how much I paid for it. If you get the flip, like I've got, and it goes like this, and you're like, oh, great, it's got like a magnet. That's great. It sticks. Yeah, the whole selling point of this deal here is the way that it is curved. It makes it easier to hold. Now, if you get a case like I got, you just took that away. Again, if you like to read with one hand, you got large hands, you can probably do it. It's not very comfortable to do it, like if you're laying down and reading or anything like that. But I usually just kind of read like this and balance. It's so lightweight, it's not a big deal. But I will say, guys, do your research on a case first. Make sure you're going to get one that works for you. 
If you get a flip one like I do and it kind of takes away the handhold here, it's kind of obnoxious. I've had a lot of people in the comments that video say to get a pop socket. I haven't uh, actually experimented with that yet, but I've been interested. Don't know if it would go through two layers here to, to be magnet, magnetized enough, but I don't know. I haven't, I, like I said, I spent so much in this case, I want to make sure <laughs> that I use it. So uh, do your research on the cover first. Uh, also, if you sideload your books, if you don't buy everything off of Amazon, or if you're like me and you're upgrading from a different device and you want to kind of bring your own stuff over, no judgment on what you are doing, where you're getting them, any of that stuff, I'm not talking about that. What I'm saying is it's sideloading. While it can still be easy, it can be kind of obnoxious if you are OCD and you like all of your covers to match. Because I don't know, every time it seems like every time there's an update for this, uh, it just like crushes some of your cover art. Now, does that change the books? No, the books stay fine. If you're one of those who like all your cover art to look nice and organized and perfect and everything to have an image and not just text, there are some issues with that. Uh, and here's the thing is if you buy one from Amazon and it has its own cover, even if you don't want to change it or anything like that, and then it just disappears. And you know, when you talk to Amazon about Amazon support, they'll say, well, just, just delete it and re-download it. You own it. And it will fix it. But here's the problem I've been having. A lot of them, the cover art will be there. As soon as I start reading the book, it disappears. Like I just read Kings of the Wild, which I bought directly from Amazon. So it's not any problems with like side loading or anything like that. Started reading at about 20%, the cover just disappears. And again, that's when I contacted them. They said, oh, just delete it and re-download it. I did. The cover showed back up. Great. Start reading again, disappeared. So these are little things that are obnoxious. It's not anything I'm going to say it should be like a, a make or break for if you buy this device. But if you're like me and you like everything to be super organized, uh, yeah, it's it's going to be obnoxious to you. And that really, really bugs me. Uh, internet features on this are still really slow. There's not, uh, it doesn't support 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi or anything like that. So the browser and stuff are going to be really slow. Look, I have other devices. I have a smartphone. I have an iPad. I don't use this for internet features, but if you don't have those other options like I just talked about, and this is the only device that you're going to be using for browsing the internet, that's going to be a big, big miss for you because it is glacially. It's like paperweight slow, <laughs> basically. Uh, so I, I wouldn't recommend getting it for that. Like it has, you know, Goodreads integration and things like that, but it's super slow and it's very slow to react to anything you like you press you'll, you'll spell v and then wait for a couple seconds and then tick, 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 it'll pop up so the browser stuff and goodreads is still really really slow off this so don't use this if you're wanting it for a primary device or social media interaction keep that kind of stuff for your phone or your, or your tablet that's what i would recommend again if you don't have those options you know there you go to me that's a big miss and i don't even use it for that again the whole reason i bought a kindle besides eye strain was to eliminate distractions because when i was reading on my ipad i'd always be like oh well let me just kind of check something on twitter real fast next thing i know i was like ah i haven't been reading for 30 minutes now so again that's not a big negative to me but i know it will be for some people micro usb is obsolete i don't know why they didn't go with like a type c port on this i'm pretty sure they'll probably put out uh the next version of this before they put out kindle color or something like that again i don't know if kindle color is coming i just assume it's got to be the next step right Again, that's not a make or break. It just it just seems weird to me why you're still doing that. I mean, anyway, the cost. That's the big negative here, the cost. Look, this sucker, the 8 gigabyte model is what I have, which is enough, by the way. If you only are reading text-based books and you don't need a bunch of images, you're not doing comics or manga or anything like that, all you need is the 8 gigabytes. But uh, yeah, 250 with ads, 270 without. The 32 gigabyte is 280 with ads, 300 Without This is all U.S. dollars, by the way. I'm in the U.S., so I don't know the conversions there. Here's my advice to you guys if you're concerned about that cost. First, wait for a sale. They do sales on these things all of the time. If you guys followed me on Twitter, you would know that on Black Friday, they were selling these things like 80 bucks off. So, you know, there was a lot of sales that go on. Watch out for Prime Day. Watch out for Black Friday. Watch out just Christmas time. They'll randomly put someone... If you're a Prime customer... All the time, they'll send you offers of prime deals only. And you know, today, it's 50 bucks off. Also, I'd recommend save your $20, pay for the version that says with ads. And you think, oh, that's just too annoying. Here's the deal. If you spend a lot of money at Amazon, which just about all of us do, go into customer support and say, look, 
I didn't know about this. Is there any way you guys would just go ahead and take these ads off for me? I would really appreciate it. I spent a lot of money with you guys and I'll do it. Me, I said, look, my videos have sold you guys about 300 Kindles. Is it okay if uh, you take the ads off for me? And I said, absolutely. So again, there are ways around that kind of stuff. And if, at this point, I say, if you're paying that much for something, what's another 20 bucks? But again, every nickel counts when you're paying this much for a device. Now let's talk about why you should buy it. Like, like I said, first off, wait for sale. I'll put the links in the bottom for there is a bundle deal that they do, which is the actual device itself, the case, and a charger. I think that's the best bargain there is for this device. Uh, I think that's the best thing, the way you should go. Uh, but again, guys, look, the number one reason, this reduces eye strain. It's the best thing for your eyes because our smartphones and our computer screens that we start all day are destroying our eyesight. And if you don't want to be blind before you're 50, I definitely think that that's something you need to take into consideration. So the younger you are, the better off you will be. I definitely think if you're one of those people who is struggling with space and you want to kind of reduce that, or say you're sick of carrying, you know, 14 pound Stephen King novels with you everywhere. Hey, look, I got a whole library of Stephen King on this device. Great, and look how light it is excellent idea. So again, if you audio book a lot, this is a big one. I don't audio book, but I'll, everybody that watches this channel likes to tell me about how much they, they like to listen to audio books and how much they recommend them. Here's a really cool feature, which I haven't used, but I've been it's been descri described to me and it sounds really excellent. Say you're one of those people who likes to read while you're at home, listen while you're in the car. Really cool feature that it has is something called WhisperSync. If you link your Audible account to your device, and what you do is you, where you're reading it, it syncs up automatically to the other side. So say you're reading at home and you read the first chapter and you get in the car and you want to listen to chapter two, it automatically goes to chapter two. It knows where you stopped. So you don't have to spend any time fast forward and rewind and be like, wait a second, it wasn't, where was I? Really cool little feature there. And say, when you get back home, you want to go back to where you were reading, where you stopped in the car, it's going to go automatically back to where you were. So if you are an audible hound, I think this is definitely the device for you guys. Now look, if I have any final thoughts here, it's just, I wasn't sure even about a month into using this thing if I had made the right decision. Like I said, I like being able to put the paper white in my pocket, like being able to easily read it with one hand, which by the way, you can read this with one hand. You're not gonna get arm strain or something. Look, I don't lift a lot, but you're not gonna get arm strain or nothing if you're one of those people who likes to hold it up like this while you read it. Uh, but again, little things like that that I thought that I was going to have a problem with. But after using this for a couple of months, I was like, look, this is better in every way. And when I plugged in my wife's paper wipe and went back and tried using that OS, I was just like blown away by the processing speed. That alone to me is worth it if you're just looking for a less janky device. That is the word of the day, janky, right? But uh, other than the whole bit where I like to fit it in my pocket, I think that I like this device better in every single way over the paper white. And guys, that's kind of where I'm at now. Uh, this, like I said, this will be the last one. I don't, unless unless Kobo wants to send me one for free, I don't think I'll be reviewing anything like that because uh, this is still coming out of my pocket. But uh, look, it's worth the upgrade. Absolutely, I will, I will rescind what I said in the last one. If you've got the money, obviously, go for it. If you haven't bought one yet, I'd say start here. This is the great place to start. Uh, I'm not saying it's the best e-reader on the market or anything like that because I know Android people and Kobo people like to jump all over me when I say that. For me though, in my experience, just versus the Paperwhite, absolutely, this is the way to go. You will not regret it. It will be worth it if you've got the money to spend. So guys, do you have a Kindle device? Which one's your favorite? Do you have any other devices that you want to talk about? Drop in the comments and let's talk about it there, guys. And happy reading.